I received this uh, NEMA 24 stepper motor kit from <coughs> Steppers Online. Uh, it's a three axis kit. I only have one axis here with the power supply, which is a uh, 36 volt, 350 watt power supply. And this Mach 3 uh, interface board, which has parallel port, and uh, the USB port actually is only for your 5 volt power. Um, these M542T drivers are they're awesome. They do anything from full step right up to 100 or 1 256th steps, which uh, normally these stepper motors are 200 steps per revolution. Uh, you can actually achieve approximately 50,000 steps per revolution. Um, I've never ran them that high. I usually run stuff around 1 8th step, so uh, you're looking roughly about 1600 steps per revolution. Um, now these stepper motors, uh, they came with this nice paper which gives you pretty much every, all the information you need for mounting. Uh, mounting to them, same as NEMA 23. Um, there's, you've got a bit bigger shaft. Um, they're a lot higher power. They, uh, this sheet gives you everything. It gives you its holding torque, its rated current, which is good for setting these guys up. Uh, so these motors are actually uh, rated at three and a half amps per phase. Uh, this controller does not have a setting that's exactly three and a half. Uh, so you can either go with the, uh, if you look at the current cable, there's a 3.2 amp or a 3.7 amp. Now I've already gone ahead and uh, set this for 3.2 amps um, and one eighth step. So uh, if you look here, it gives you, there's switches on the front in between the uh, your control input and your power output. Uh, the tells you what switches, what position to put them. Uh, it all depends on your application, uh, what motors you're using. So for the current table, like I said, I use 3.2 amps. It also has a mode, which you can use your full current or half current. So if your current is lower than what's on these, you can go to half current and just divide your peaks by two, and that's where it'll output. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to wire up one axis and then I'll drag over the board which I've already wired the rest of the stuff just to speed this up a little bit and uh, I'll clarify everything in an, the written document that you'll see uh, see listed. Um, so yeah I'm just gonna wire this guy up and uh, we'll go get a get going with this. So your stepper motor has uh, four wires you usually you have a red, a blue, a green, and a black and uh, the data sheet will tell you what there's two coils it'll tell you what wires go to what coil so um, and then on your driver you have obviously your two coil hookups now this connection diagram shows that red and blue are one coil and black and green are another coil uh, so if you the light, way I like wiring them on this is uh, red, blue, green, black. If I make them all the same, all the motors will turn the same direction when I give it the same signal, and we're good. So I'll just go ahead here and show you how to hook them up. So what you're gonna do is when you're looking at the front of this, you're gonna see your motor connections, A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus, and beside those you have your DC power supply wires. So I'll go ahead and I'll hook up the motor from right to left. You're going to go to red. Blue. Green. And black. Okay, make sure those are in there snug. Also, these connectors do pull out, which is nice if you have to change a driver in the future. You don't have to rewire everything. All you have to do is set your switches for your settings. So, stepper motor is connected. I'm gonna go ahead and I already pre-cut two wires here to go on my power supply. So when you look at the front of your power supply, you'll notice you have your 115, 230 input, which is selectable by the switch on the side here like that and then 
you have your connections, your line, your neutral, your ground, your negative output for your 36 volts and your positive output for your 36 volts. Now with these power supplies, for some odd reason, it allows you to run 115 volts when you're on the 230 volt setting and its output is not affected. Now, I didn't know that until I got this power supply, but just make sure that you set the power supply to what voltage you're actually inputting on it. So I'm gonna hook up my DC wires. And that's the next step on my controller. So beside the leads that you just connected for the stepper motor is your high voltage DC leads. So negative is closest to the switches. And if you don't get this right, then you're gonna be buying yourself a new controller. And red is closest to the red for the motor. Okay, so with those connected, Gonna spin this around here. It should look like that. So you have two leads going from your power supply to the controller, and from the controller you have four leads going to your motor. Now these motors also have mounting for an encoder or a hand crank wheel, which are very nice because you can actually create a servo motor out of a stepper with a encoder on it. So along with all this comes this nice controller board. Now, you need essentially three inputs on this board. You need your uh, 12 to 24 volt DC, which unfortunately you can't wire the 36 to, but that is the two center terminals on the left side of the board when the ports are facing at you. So if you look on the back, it, they're all labeled in English and uh, what you can do is you can look in ground and your pulse width for your spindle, which is nice if you have a VFD. Um, on my system, I just run a DeWalt router, so I don't really need that zero to 10 output. Then you have your plus 12 to 24 volts in and your ground as well for that power. And then over here, you have your normally open relay contact for whatever you decide to assign that to in your Mach 3 software. And then along the back here, you'll see that you have, starting at left, you have your X pulse, your X direction, your Y pulse, Y direction, all the way up right through to your fifth axis, which is B. As well on the back, you have a pulse width out, and then you have your PC, which is your five volts and a five volt ground as well. So it looks as if all the grounds are connected on this board, but it's just easier if you use the terminals that are closest to whatever you're using. There's also an enable pin, which will enable your stepper motors so that you can control them. So I'm gonna slide over my other board here because I have all the wires already on it and uh, I'll continue hooking this up and then we can move on and I'll, uh, we can see this thing at least start up. So I've already wired two of the axes, there you'll see, and I got jumpers on the driver between all the grounds, uh, I'm just running one ground from the control board over to all three axes and individual uh, step and direction pins. So I'll go ahead and I'm just going to remount this guy on this board. There, and there. So this controller has its power and motor already wired. Now I have two wires here, which I'm gonna use for my step and direction, which I'm using out of an ethernet cable is just my green and my green white. So I'm gonna go and put that on, I'm gonna put the solid green on my pulse input and my stripe green on the direction plus five volt input. So inside these drivers is just an optical coupler so you're completely optically isolated from whatever systems you're working with across the high voltage and low voltage. I got my enable wires as well which I jumped across all three 
controllers because you either enable them all or disable them all. So I'm going to tighten down the enable plus five and the brown stripe I used as a common ground for everything. So I'm just going to go drop a jumper in and tighten that down like so. So that's your control side of it done on your driver. Now on your control board here, I'm going to slide that over here. I am going to throw some screws in it. So it's nice and secure. And then what the way I'm going to set this up is that green, which is this far driver, is X, center one's Y, and the far one here is Z. Now my X is green, Y is orange, Z is uh, blue, and then my brown is enable, which applies to all of them. So I'm just going to throw this on so you can see movement. Here we go. And then I'm going to start terminating this. So from the right now, since the board's right side up, I'm going to do green, green striped. Then I'm going to do my orange with my orange stripe. Then I'm going to go blue with my blue stripe. And then my enable, which is brown, is going to go on. If you look at the top, it's going to be labeled P15. Or P14, sorry. And then your common ground can just go to the PC ground. Uh, it seems to be the closest ground on that board to that pin. So after you do that, you have your green direction and step hooked up from driver to controller your enable hooked up the power so I'm going to go ahead and put these power jumper leads in here I got them already on here so let's loosen this guy back off put that in there and also your positive Okay, so now I got everything connected that I need on all three drivers. I need to apply power to the power supply. So I'll go ahead. Brown is usually going to be your line. Uh, blue will be your neutral. So I'll go ahead and put those two on. And then green or green, yellow, yellow, there's lots of colors for ground. So I'm going to put that on the ground. And then for my 12 volt, I'm using a 12 volt power supply that I had lying around. Um, again, I'm, I ran out of the different colors of wire, so I'm sort of stuck with what I have here. So I'll use blue as my line. that in. Neutral is white. Okay, and then ground. I also ran a white. Not a good idea, but there we go. So now I have my 12 volt wires over here. That, uh, that I have to hook up to this board. And um, if you look here closely, it'll show you that your uh, 24 volt or 12 to 24 volt 
is on the center two terminals with your positive being the one furthest from your port side and then your ground is the one that's closer I have a USB power just coming from a USB charger so I'll plug that in and I can freely spin these motors any which way I want so now I'm going to go ahead and turn power on you've got your 12 to 24 volts and it's a bit of a delay for my charger to kick on but it shows that you have power to your relay and then you also have your 5 volt power now right now I can move these motors any which way I want however I want because it has that 5 volt power to power the logic on this control board and I don't have a computer with a parallel port right now hooked up and running um, and I don't have Mach 3 but this will give you a general idea and it all depends on what software you're using and how you set it up for your application so if I pull the 5 volts off this board the motors kick in now they're actually enabled because it's not getting that signal from the board and I can't I can turn them if I really try so they have quite a bit of holding torque I have them running on a bit lower current right now um, but you'll also hear a small whine if I'm not using them for running right this minute I'm just gonna lower the current so that they don't get too warm when they're just sitting here idle because um, stepper motors tend to use that full current when they're idle just for holding uh, when they're running they actually run cooler because they're not running at their full potential unless they're under that much load so I'll plug the 5 volts back in and they're disabled again so when you hook this up to your computer you can use the USB to parallel port adapters uh, I currently have one in the mail it's not here yet or you can go right to a computer with a parallel port configure your Mach 3 software to use a Mach 3 breakout board over your parallel port and um, configure your axes for your steps per revolution um, steps per millimeter whatever your application is in that software and uh, these will mount in any NEMA 23 or NEMA 24 uh, mount or application um, I'll have a document that shows step by step how to do all this again but I just thought I'd create a video to show you guys how to hook it up and show uh, the wires that are needed for this uh, project.